Hi there. I'm here to introduce you to a Cello Wolf Rehabilitation Kit that I've designed. Uh, this is my most recent model of this set, and I'll unbox it and show you what's inside. So there are multiple components. Uh, the things you'll see right away are these little uh, button-style Cello Wolf controlling clamps that fit on your string. There's already one on my cello. You unscrew the top from the bottom. They, are, they hit the string at a fixed point. And um, what's different about mine that I've spent several years researching than some that you might have seen is for one thing, the materials are different. Um, and I found that different materials sound and sounded and functioned differently. But even more than that, the balance points are different. Um, in my experimentations, I started with sort of oversized blanks and I laid them down to different balance points. I glued little lead or heavy steel weights on different portions. And by doing that, I discovered that uh, the balance point really makes a difference. That if they're symmetrical, they work okay. But if you balance more of the weight above the string, and you can actually even adjust it a little bit by angling it one way or the other, but, but basically you just put it above the string. Um, and then what happens is when the string really goes haywire from a frequency resonance, which is what causes a wolf tone on your cello, um, you actually get a little bit of a pendulum effect where part of the wolf eliminator goes in the opposite direction from the, the errant, fre the errant um, oscillations on the string, and it actually controls those crazy vibrations more, whereas when the string is acting in a more normal way, it doesn't kick into that pendulum effect and it just works as an entire system. So because these operate at a fixed point, you can tune the after length of the string, you know, to different frequencies and gives you a great deal of sort of surgical control over what you want to do with problem notes on your cello. Um, you can put them in the most C strings. Um, some C strings, a gut C string can be really fat and so these won't fit in that, but most, you know, tungsten, magna core, spiral core, the standard C strings, you can put them on G strings. D strings and even most A strings, although there's not really much point in that. I find they generally work best on the G or the C and sometimes I've used them on a D when I wanted a particular sound. Um, I use these for tone as well as wolf control. I use them probably half the time when I play and sometimes if you get really boomy acoustics and you want to focus up a C string or you want to do different things with the sound, you know, it, they're, they're great for that. But every room is different, every cello is different, every player is different. So I like to have an assortment of tools to work with when either my cello is acting up because of the weather. This is not a particularly wolfy cello and I usually just ignore the wolves, but I use them more for, for tone and, you know, doing special things to the response. They're great for bluegrass if you want a very quick response. You know, they can really help with the quickness of the response, depending on which one you use. Now, mine range, um, this particular set ranges from about 4.7 to 7.3 grams, depending on the nine possible combinations of the three tops and three bottoms. Um, the three types of metal on the bottoms are uh, a sort of a bell brass and then a 300 series stainless steel, which is what you find in surgical tools and kitchen implements, that sort of stuff. And then I have a 400 series uh, stainless steel, which is sort of a knife blade. It's a harder stainless steel. So there are three different hardnesses of metals. And I find that that varies the, the response and sound very slightly. These are subtle differences, but it's, it's fun to have that degree of control. The tops are all 300 series stainless, um, which is a, a great sound. Um, and, and I do find, you know, I am really partial to the sound of stainless in, in, in these clamps. Most, almost everybody just uses brass, which is also a nice sound. I find stainless a little bolder, a little more soloistic. Brass can be a little warmer, you know, if you want that sort of warm but slightly more colored sound, you can go for the brass bottom. Um, and, uh, you know, and then of course the, the hardest stainless steels may be the, the, the boldest. Um, but uh, there are just lots of options with these. Now you'll see another interesting object in this set wrapped in leather. Um, and this is a magnet resonator. Now you might have seen them, then they're very popular in recent years. They've been all the rage. Um, a lot of people put them in their cellos. They're like a heavy, they're, they're the hummer of wolf resonators and controls. They're, they're very, you know, sometimes, I mean, there, there's one popular brand that weighs 35 grams, which I, I think is a little too heavy in my experiments. I found that 25 grams work 
better. It, it, got, it managed wolves as well and didn't color the sound as much. Um, now these, I, I also have a patent pending little tool to install um, this safely because uh, this didn't exist and I really wanted it, so I designed it and made, and made it. Um, in the near future, I'm going to be opening up this design to Creative Commons. So people with 3D printers who want to try it out, just look, keep an eye on my website, keep an eye in the description below, and I'll show you how to make them. Um, it tends to be cheapest to make them in bulk, so um, you know you might find that making one or two is cost prohibitive, but, but it's a fun design to try if you have your own 3D printer. Um, so then this magnet resonator has um, two parts, the top and the bottom. I found in my experiments that the type of material used here, that I, this is a particular kind of wool, a thick wool pad that I use stamping out a, a cylindrical um, pads. Um, and I found that that sounded the best because you do get a piston action there, sort of a piston and a vibrating action on the pad. And so if you just put raw magnets in, it'll change the tone of your cello. Not so great at, at controlling wolves because there, there's, you don't get the sort of the, the, you know, the 180 degree out of phase oscillation, which is what controls those errant um, frequencies. Um, Mine, I put this uh, pad on the bottom, a rubber rubber pad just for protection because if somebody isn't careful and they just let go and let go, the back sides are very strong, just like the front sides are. And that's just something for shipping until you get to know how to use it. It's easier to put in and take out if you take that pad off, you know, with your fingernails. So take it off, but then be very careful. Don't hold them loosely, don't leave them around for your kids because if they snap together, you have to pry them sideways. They're very, very strong. So you have to pull this apart, keep this in this hand tightly, take this hand and install this into, um, into the little installer, keep them safely apart, far away. Put this in here, then on your cello, put it down here, then draw them closer and then you can slide it around and you can adjust to where you want. The closer you get it to the edge, uh, the less it does. And the more it's neutral, then you pull it to the middle, it makes pretty significant changes to the sound of your cello. You can hear all sorts of things. You know, the standard place where most of the wolf vibrations happen is they're generally right in here in, on a cello, but that isn't necessarily the place that sounds the best. You just have to try it and experiment and then compare it to the clamps. I tend to use the clamps more than the magnet, but it's fun to have both just in case. You get it out, you put it back on the cello, slide it around, and then pull this away safely in your hand and pull this out. Then, again, holding both sides firmly, put them back together, keep it safe, wrap it up in the leather, put it away, tie it. You know, don't leave these things around. You don't want your pets getting them. You don't want your little children getting them because they are strong. They can fly, you know, a foot or more if you have them apart and aren't holding them firmly. Hold them firmly, it is a safety issue. So um, these are the, uh, the elements of this set and I hope they can be useful to you. Thanks for listening.